The NHL has a big weekend ahead, another exciting outdoor game, a record-setting night for Zdeno Chara, and controversy surrounding Alexander Ovechkin. All that and more on this episode of the Locked On NHL Podcast. You're Locked On NHL, your daily podcast on the National Hockey League. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team, every day. All right, everybody. Welcome to the Friday edition of the Locked On NHL podcast. And thank you for making Locked On NHL your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms. I'm Gil Martin. And as always on Friday, I am joined by my co-host, Rachel Donner. Rachel, how are you today? I'm good. Glad it's Friday. Yeah, always glad it's Friday. Made it through another week and a, a crazy week uh, in world events. But, you know, still some some good things going on around the NHL. And uh, I'll tell you, looking forward to this weekend's slate of games, among other things. Oh, yeah. Saturday is jam-packed. I'm excited to talk about it. Yeah, should be should be uh, a really good uh way to kick off the weekend and and maybe take your mind off some of the other things that are going on around the world. And, you know, I think that it, it, it's kind of interesting to see how in some ways that some of those events are sort of making themselves felt around the league a little bit. Yeah, a, more than a little bit. Uh, we have uh, Alexander Ovechkin, of course, Washington Capitals player who is kind of finding himself in the center of a storm with the political happenings, of course, with uh, Russia's invasion of Ukraine and finding himself in a position where he's being asked to you know, answer questions about that, given that he has publicly supported Putin in the past. And there's a lot of questions about the questions, right? You know, is it okay to ask athletes about these political events? And who should be asking those questions? Yeah. And then what, if anything, does the athlete owe the public as far as answers are concerned? It's, uh, it is an interesting thing. Now, on Thursday night at Madison Square Garden, uh, fans at the Garden booing Alexander Ovechkin every time he touched the puck. Now, obviously, part of that has to do with the fact that he is one of the best players in the league, and he's done a lot of damage to the Rangers over the years yes. as a member of the Washington Capitals. But part of it is also, uh, it's probably louder and more people involved because of the political situation. And the Capitals uh, announced before the Thursday night game that they would not make Alexander Ovechkin available to the media, saying they wanted to keep the focus on the game at Madison Square Garden, but saying that they would, in the near future, probably on a non-game day, make Ovechkin available. And, and it'll be interesting to see what, if anything, he says to address the issue. Yeah, I'm sure it's it's very dicey for him as well, uh, you know, and I think that's part of the reason why I bring up, is it okay to ask him these questions? Because obviously with Russia and that regime, you know, there are personal safety issues involved when you speak and talk about it positively or negatively, you know, or, or at all there, you know, it can be a challenging thing to navigate. And, you know, at the same time, you have hockey reporters, you know, and, you know, I will include myself in the category of people who aren't as familiar with the intricacies of the geopolitical <laughs> conflicts going on over there. And, you know, I certainly have my feelings about it, but I am not equipped as, you know, somebody in hockey media to ask the right questions in the right way and to understand the context of all of it. And so I think it is a delicate situation where, yes, I, I do ultimately think the questions should be asked, but I also think they should be asked by the right people in the right way. Yeah, and I think, you know, what you said about the fact that he may not be free to give a, a, a lengthy answer without getting himself 
into some kind of or his family into some kind of potential uh, issues coming up. Let's let's put it that way. Uh, you know, he, you, you can ask all you want. He may not elaborate very much on anything. That is also true, as is his right. Absolutely. I mean, he's not a politician. Uh, he's just a very wealthy hockey player who is a very public face. And, you know, I, I mean, I would have to say he's probably one of the more famous Russians in this country right now. Uh, very much the face of Russia to a lot of hockey fans around North America. So it, it does sort of put him in, a, in an interesting position. It does. And it, it, like I said, it's all very complicated. It's all very delicate. And, you know, but ultimately, I do hope that he does sit down and that he does answer some questions. And hopefully we can get some clarity around this. I mean, there's other issues as well in terms of, you know, Russian participation and hosting of future international hockey tournaments um, that are that are on the table right now with the IIHC. And so, you know, there's there's a lot in the hockey world that is affected by what is going on in Russia. You know, one of the premier leagues in the world, the KHL, you know, what is the effect there? I mean, it's it's a lot. And I think he is, you know, as sort of a de facto spokesperson for Russian hockey, you know, to some degree has to answer some of those questions. Yeah, it'll be interesting to hear what he has to say and and maybe on next week's show depending on when he says it, we'll we'll pick up this topic again. Uh one one other uh milestone that I wanted to talk about a little bit. Uh Thursday night Zdeno Chara uh will be become the NHL's all-time games played leader among defensemen uh entering Thursday's game. He was tied with Chris Chelios in that category. And now he'll have that record all to himself. You know, there is something to be said about longevity records. They, they mean some things and other, in other ways, they don't mean certain things. Uh, But to me, you know, to play over 1600 regular season NHL games as a defenseman, it says something about the quality of play and, and, and what you bring to the table over a very long period of time. I think there's a, a couple of things. First off, anything that knocks Chris Chelios off a list is great by me. Great for me personally. But I think, you know, with Chara, one of the things that I appreciate the most about him as a player is the way he's been able to adapt his game over the course of his career to play to his strengths. And, you know, of course, you look at kind of peak Chara with the hardest shot at the All-Star game, but he you know, he was able to create an environment where people were genuinely afraid to get in front of him. And I I think that is just a phenomenal achievement as a hockey player, but he was also pretty dangerous out there. And, you know, was, is a really solid defenseman on both ends of the ice, but he's been able as he's gotten older to kind of specialize and, you know, come out there in certain situations and, you know, obviously, I think you could speak to it more than I can, just because you've probably seen more Chara games than I have. But I, I think he's he's been just a remarkable defenseman over the course of his career. Oh, absolutely. I mean, he's a surefire Hall of Famer once he uh, hangs up the skates. And look, right now, he is no longer the Norris Trophy winning caliber defenseman that he was right. in his prime. But, you know, he's smart. And, you know, he uses his reach, he uses his, his, uh, his mind and his experience to get himself in the right position. He still sticks up for his teammates, even though he's, you know, more than twice some of their ages, believe it or not, at this point. And he, he provides a lot of leadership. So even at the age of 44, he is still a productive NHL defenseman who can give you 20 plus minutes a night and, and you know, congratulations to him. This really is quite an accomplishment. They they don't put your name on the lineup for 1,600 plus games if you're not doing something right. Oh, absolutely. And man, that, you know, we're going to talk about a uh, Jersey retirement ceremony in the next segment. And I'm just thinking about all of the post Chara career accolades and ceremonies to come. And I'm already getting weepy. <laughs> 
Yeah, definitely something to look forward to. And we'll be talking about that and a whole lot more coming up. But right now, I want to talk to you about Built Bar. This is the time of year that I've pretty much given up on all my New Year's resolutions, but not this year. I'm sticking to my resolution to eat right thanks to Built Bar. It almost feels like it's not really a resolution because I actually enjoy eating them. Have you tried the puffs? Because if you haven't, you're missing out on one of Built Bar's best tasting bars. Puffs are the first ever protein infused marshmallow. They're fluffy, they're marshmallowy. They're not just a protein bar, they're a treat. And like all Built Bars, they're covered in 100% real chocolate. Puffs are a fan favorite with some incredible flavors. Yum, yummy cinnamon churro, coconut marshmallow, banana cream pie. Banana cream pie, so good. These are going to be your new favorites. And like all Built Bars, they're low calorie, high protein. You can replace your candy bars with these. They're better. And a typical candy bar can be anywhere between two and 300 calories. But most Built Bars are just 130 calories, four grams of sugar, only four net carbs, but they pack 17 grams of protein. At Built Bar, they're all about the taste. They make it delicious first, then figure out how to make it healthy. And I don't know how, but they pull it off every time. Go to built.com, use the promo code LOCK15, you'll get 15% off your order. That's promo code LOCK15 for 15% off at built.com. All right. So thank you for making Locked On NHL your first listen. For your next listen, check out the Locked On Now podcast, nightly recaps of every NHL games with analysis from our local experts. It's free and available wherever you get podcasts. So, Rachel, before the break, you were talking about uh, some Jersey retirements. Why don't you uh, take us into that area? Yeah, of course. Last night we saw Pekka Rene get his number 35 raised to the rafters in Nashville. And, man, I am such a sucker for these things. Um, I'm not – obviously, I think Pekka Rene is a phenomenal goaltender, but I'm not emotionally attached to him very much because I'm just – I'm not a Nashville fan. But at the same time, this was just such a wonderful ceremony and um, just the way that people talk about him as a person. He's just extraordinary, and the way that – he appreciates everybody around him and all of his teammates just had glowing things to say about him. Uh, David Poyle, who, you know, as a GM, like you don't really expect, you know, anything emotional or anything profound, but just the way that he walked through Pekka Rene's career and what he means to the city of Nashville and basically put the Predators on the map mm-hmm. in the NHL. Um, you know, this is the first jersey retirement for nashville because it is one of the younger teams you don't think about it as much because we've had a couple expansion teams in the interim but you know nashville is a relatively young team in this league and it was an interesting market for the nhl to get into and wow how successful it's been and a lot of that is due to pekka rene and his dynamic play in net and just the way they kind of joked about him being drafted in the eighth round, which no longer exists. Um, But, you know, over a dozen seasons with that team and, you know, his family was there. Uh, Roman Yossi gave a really remarkable speech honoring him and just the whole thing. The whole thing was great. Yeah, they did a really nice job. And and look, Pecorine was really the first star of that franchise and carried them to their early success. So a well-deserved honor for him. Very appropriate that he would be the first number retired uh, in Nashville. And, and you know, I was surprised when Nashville got an expansion team. Uh, and, and, yeah, you're right. They have really pulled it off quite successfully there. Grassroots on up, and, and they did it right. They did, and they announced at the game that they are going to be putting a bronze statue of Pekka Rene outside Bridgestone Arena. That's super cool. Um, at some point during the game, somebody threw a catfish out on the ice that was wearing a Pekka Rene jersey, which I don't want to even know how they did that, but they did. <laughs> um, you know, I guess that's what you do for a guy that's one of Vezina and a King Clancy and a four-time All-Star, right? You dress up a catfish like him. Okay. 
Yeah, that's a different activity than I had in mind for myself, but okay. <laughs> uh, but it, it's all in good fun. And it's, it, you know, again, it, it's a nice, it's a unique tribute. Let's put it that way. <laughs> it is. It is. Uh, now, we have another outdoor game coming up this weekend. And, and this one should be fun, uh, also involving the Nashville Predators. Yeah, I think it was really cool that they kind of put this together so they're honoring Pekka Rene, you know, in the same weekend as the outdoor game so people could, like, make a thing of it. Yeah, I mean, it, it's a great transition. And then, you know, here's the thing. Uh, you know, the two teams going at each other in this game, the Predators and the Lightning, they're not, like, natural rivals, but it should be a darn good hockey game all the same. Yeah, it's two really good teams, so I think it should be fun. And you're right. It is an interesting combination because this is the only game that they'll play against each other this season, I think. Um, or the, the, maybe they'll have one more. But it's the first game they're playing against each other this season. And it's the Preds' second outdoor game, Tampa's first outdoor game. Uh, interestingly, the only teams left that haven't had one are Arizona, Columbus, Florida, and Seattle. Uh, Carolina hasn't yet, but they're on schedule for next season already. Right. So uh, we'll see how that goes. It would be weird if they had them play like Columbus or something, <laughs> but <laughs> just to check it off. But uh, yeah, it's uh, these are always fun. I like the environment. Now, this one is at Nissan Stadium where the Titans play. Mm -hmm. And I will always prefer the baseball stadiums to the football stadiums for atmosphere, but the sight lines are definitely better in a football stadium. I will absolutely concede that, but um, it should be a lot of fun because that's, that's a great stadium. I think, you know, with a lot of enthusiasm in it. And of course it's going to be a country music themed thing. I think Miranda Lambert's performing at some point. So it should be a lot of fun. It should be. And, and you know, it's a chance to really get to feel the atmosphere of the city and celebrate the city. And, and you know, I like these outdoor games. The, the, I, I attended one as a member of the media, uh, the Islanders and the Rangers at Yankee Stadium. And, you, you know, it's one of those things where you, you, as a fan or as a member of the media, you could just, it, it's one of those things you have to check off your bucket list almost like. It's like, okay, I had that experience and it's unique and it's fun. And, you know, it, it, as a fan, if you can get to one of those outdoor games, I highly recommend it. Same. I've been to a, a quite a few of them. Um, I think five Wow. at this point. Um, well, I kept going to the Flyers ones because they kept losing them. And so finally they yeah. did win. We actually just had um, the other day, the third anniversary of the Flyers winning the outdoor game against the Penguins uh, where the Flyers came back to tie it. And then Giroux scored in overtime, very infamous goal. It was Wayne Simmons last game as a flyer. Cause the trade deadline was like the next day right? and he got sent away and it was all sad. It was like the most exhilarating and depressing moment all at once, which checks out for the Flyers. Let's be real. But yeah, um, you know, all of them, I think, were a lot of fun in their own ways. You know, going to one at Fenway, which they're going to do again, uh, that we learned recently. And so I'm all for it because Fenway is such a tremendous environment. Um, I went to one at Citizens Bank Park. I went to one at Heinz Field. Um, actually, maybe I went to two at Heinz Field because I oh. went to one that was Flyers Pens and I went to one that was Caps Pens. Okay. That was the one where Sidney Crosby got hurt because it was mm -hmm. raining. <laughs> yeah. So um, I've been I've been there for quite a few of the um, outdoor game moments. And it's all just it. I don't think it gets old. I really no. don't. I think no. maybe maybe it does from home. But being there, it just does not get old. It's it's just so much fun. It, it is. And I, I mean, it was very, very cold at Yankee Stadium uh, at the game that I was at. And they had like these little heat lamps for us uh, in the press box, which did almost nothing. And uh, <laughs> I still loved every minute of it, as cold as I was. So uh, a great experience. And, you know, I guess once the game starts, if you're watching it on TV, there are, you know, the camera angles aren't as good as they are at an indoor game. And maybe the quality of the ice isn't as good. But 
there is something just beautiful about it and unique and 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 overall i i love it i i'm glad they're doing you know let's say three outdoor games four outdoor games a year i think it's a great thing yeah and i love the jerseys for this one i think they're just weird enough to be cool <laughs> that i just love the oversized lightning bolt for the tampa jerseys and i love the using a nashville city font for the smashville on theirs um i i think it just yeah it, it looks weird but cool and i think that just fits with this team combo yeah it's unique it's special it's an event and and i love it so uh yeah absolutely well, we will talk about some of the other games coming up this weekend next. But first, we're going to talk about our friends at Bet Online. Football might be over for this season, but we've got basketball in full steam for both the pro and college hoops games. From all the latest odds, totals, player performance props to where the next fired coach is going to land, betonline.net is the number one spot for all your sports betting needs. BetOnline remains the best spot for all your sports scores, podcasts, and news this season. And it's not just basketball. BetOnline.net is your source for hockey, boxing, UFC odds, right to all the other sports coverage you need. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action. BetOnline, where the game starts. Now, Rachel, we have got a lot of great games coming up this weekend. I am looking forward to it. And, you know, usually Friday night, it's a, it's kind of a, a – a smaller slate of games and maybe we're lucky to find one good game, but you know, this, this weekend there's, there's a whole bunch of good games all three days. There are, I think, you know, Friday is a little bit slower of a night overall, but there's a couple of good ones. I'm intrigued by Kings versus ducks because I love that rivalry. Mm -hmm. It's weird to have like the in California rivalry, but those teams are so close geographically. And when you go, Especially you go to a Ducks game, you're going to get a lot of Kings fans who will make the trip. And I, so I love that atmosphere. Yeah, no, that's, that's one of those great rivalries. And, and, you know, okay, L.A. and Anaheim are not traditional hockey cities compared to, you know, Boston or Chicago. But their fans are passionate and it is, it is a, a, a great rivalry. And look, both of those teams right now sort of fighting for position in the playoff race, and it should be a good game between two good teams. And I think the other game Friday night is Jets versus the Avalanche. I think, you know, I, you always just want to watch the Avalanche right now. And, mm -hmm. you know, our power rankings have them atop the list. Finally, <laughs> well-deserved dethroning the Panthers uh, for our locked on NHL host power rankings. And I think it's been long overdue. So any chance you get to watch the Avalanche is a good one. And, you know, the Jets are just trying to get some positioning here there they haven't been very even this season but i think you know sometimes they can step it up to the competition so it should be a fun game yeah absolutely should be and then you know saturday we we talked a little bit about tampa bay and nashville outdoors that's always a special situation but you know a matinee game saturday afternoon edmonton and florida I think there's going to be a lot of scoring chances in this game. Yeah, I think so too. It's that one should, I mean, I would not be surprised if that game is like seven to five. Or something. <laughs> yeah. But, it's going to be like eighties hockey all over again. Yeah. There's like a nice run of, of games that day. I mean, of course I'll be watching caps flyers, but you know, I would prefer probably to watch Oilers Panthers <laughs> at that at that time slot. But, you know, right after that in the mid afternoon slot is Rangers Penguins. And man, that should be an incredible game with both of those teams near the top of the Metro division. Yeah, both teams need this game. It's one of those, you know, four point games where if you could win in regulation, exactly it can make a big impact in the standings. And not exactly a secret, these two teams don't like each other. No, and it's always fun for me to watch these two teams tear each other apart and I can sit on the sidelines <laughs> and just laugh about it. 
Yeah, and then, you know, in the evening, you know, we, we talked about the outdoor game. And then you have, you know, Minnesota and Calgary. That's a, a, a nice game. Uh, and again, two teams with very similar records fighting for playoff spots. Yeah. And, you know, they're number six and number seven in our locked on power rankings. So right next to each other in the rankings. And it should be a hard fought battle. Uh, The Flames have just been on a tear offensively. And I think, you know, they're just so much fun to watch that I almost like I might be rooting for the Flames in this game. I got it. Yeah. The Flames are fun to watch. And, you know, the wild to me, they're one of those teams that doesn't get as much attention as I think they probably deserve. Uh, I can't tell you why, because they are a quality hockey club. Indeed. And then, you know, there's some late games after the outdoor game, um, or they might be regular time games if you're out West. Right. <laughs> and uh, we have, you know, once again, the Avalanche up again, Vegas Golden Knights, a uh, huge rivalry big competition between those two teams and that should be a lot of fun. Yeah, that that's going to be a good game. And like you said earlier, anytime you can see the avalanche play, go for it. It, it It's worth the price of, uh, you know, the, the two and a half hours that you're going to spend and whatever it costs to, to get them on your cable bill there. But uh, yeah, that, that should be a very good game. And, and if you're looking for a way to cap off your big day and night of hockey, that's about as good as you're going to get. Indeed. Sunday, uh, some good games as well. Edmonton, Carolina, uh, a, a nice East versus West matchup between two quality hockey teams. And, you know, we talked last week how Edmonton was doing well under their new coach. And a lot of the time, you know, okay, for three, four, five games, you get that little boost when you make a coaching change. But Edmonton really does seem to, it it seems to have made a big difference for the way that team is playing. Absolutely. And, you know, Carolina has been good, but not great recently. And so this is a game where I really think Edmonton could pick up some points if they play it right. Yeah. If they play it right. And, and, you know, not easy to, to go two time zones over uh, from West to East, but I'll tell you, right now, the Oilers are just hitting on all cylinders. They are. And I think another game on Sunday that I might want to watch for completely surface-level reasons is the Kraken versus the Sharks. And I say that just because the color schemes are very nice together with the teal of the Sharks, and you've got a similar, like, aqua-ish blue for the Kraken and I have a very dear friend who refers to all sports uniforms as costumes. <laughs> and I do that sometimes just because I enjoy it. And um, so I think the costumes in this game are going to be tremendous and it'll be worth the price of admission. Yeah, no, that should be good. And, and uh, I'll tell you, the sharks are reeling lately, really in a bit of a slump and, you know, they need to straighten themselves out if they have any hope of getting back into the playoff race. And I think the, the injury to Eric Carlson really, really hurt the San Jose Sharks. Yeah, absolutely. But it, it should be a, a very enjoyable weekend of games. Lots to choose from. And, and uh, you know, I'm looking forward to it. And hanging over all of it, the trade deadline not very far away, and I'm sure we'll be talking a Ugh. lot about that in next week's show. Yes, there will be, I'm thinking, definitely more than one of my flyers traded at the deadline, so I'll have I'm, a lot to talk about for sure. I'm sure my Islanders will have more than one also, uh, the way things are looking. So, yeah, uh, it, it's going to be that kind of a trade deadline, and we'll have it covered for you top to bottom right here on Locked On NHL and throughout the Locked On uh, NHL network. That is going to do it for us today. I want to thank everyone for making Locked On NHL your first listen every day. Now make your second listen Locked On Fantasy Hockey. Host Steel Roden and, and Flip Livingstone help you become the expert of your fantasy league. It's free and available on all platforms. Rachel, always great to to do this show with you want to wish you and all our listeners out there a, a great weekend and uh 
We will be back. I'll be back on Monday as I host the Monday edition of the Locked On NHL podcast. And we'll be back next Friday with, uh, like we said, probably a lot of trade deadline talk and anything else that's going on around the league. Have a great weekend, everybody.